Hey class. All right, I'm gonna do a little test review in case you miss in-class test review or we can't be together. You can watch this video if you'd like. So the first thing we did in unit six was simplifying rational expressions. So something like this very first one. What you're gonna to wanna to do is factor each expression separately. So always look for a greatest common factor first. And then if it's two terms, um, check to see if it's like difference of perfect squares maybe or sometimes it'll only factor greatest common factor or it could be some difference of perfect cubes and then if it's three terms um, that's our our box method or our factoring by guessing and checking so on the top here, 9x squared plus 81, I can take out a 9 and an x. So if I divide both by 9x, I'd be left with x plus 9 left. And that's as far as, far as I can factor there. On the bottom, I can start by taking out an x, and then you get x squared plus 8x minus 9. And then multiplies to negative 9, adds up to 8 since this is a trinomial would be negative 1 and 9. So it will factor to x minus 1 and x plus 9. You can throw these into the box and visualize that a little bit easier if you'd like. So on the top, we have 9x over x plus 9. In the denominator, we have x times x minus 1 times x plus 9. So then anything divided by itself equals 1. So we have x divided by x simplifies to 1, and x plus 9 divided by x plus 9 simplifies to 1. So our final answer, we have 9 left on the top over x minus 1 in the denominator. All right. Multiplying rational fractions, we're going to multiply across the top and then across the bottom so we can simplify it anything after we have factored it. So x minus 8 doesn't factor anymore. 4x squared plus 40x, I can take out a 4x, and I'm left with x plus 10. So, and then on the bottom, x squared minus 2x minus 48, so that's a trinomial, so three terms. So I'm going to see if I can factor it like this. Multiplies to 40, negative 48, and adds up to negative 2 would be a negative 8 times 6. Since it is just x squared, I know it'll factor to x minus 8 and x plus 6. And then I have an x plus 10 on, in the denominator as well. So in the numerator on the top, I have x minus 8 times 4x times x plus 10. In the denominator, I have x minus 8 times x plus 6 times x plus 10. So I can simplify the x minus 8 and the x plus 10. So that leaves me with a 4x over x plus 6. <clears throat> you cannot simplify it any further. You cannot take an x out here because the 6 does not have an x. And x plus 6 is not the same thing as 4x. Okay, same thing, factor, then multiply across the top. x squared minus 16 is difference of perfect squares, so that factors to x plus 4 and x minus 4. Along the other side on the top, multiplies to negative 90, adds up to 1. Since it is a trinomial, we're going to factor it like that. That would be negative 9 times 10. So it would be x minus 9 times x plus 10. So that's going to be our top. Um, down here, 9 minus x, you want to flip that around so it's in standard form, negative x plus 9. And then we can factor out a negative 1, so then we get x minus 9. So we always want our leading coefficients to be positive, and we want it to be written in standard form. And then my second fact, fraction multiplies up to 40, adds up to 14. It's a trinomial again. Let's see, 40, 2 and 20, 4 and 10, <clears throat> 5 and, no, not 5. Yeah, 5 and 8. 
be 13, um, 40, what else? Four and 10, oh, four and 10. Okay, that shouldn't have took me that long to think about. So then it's x plus four times x plus 10. All right, then we can simplify an x plus four with this x plus four. I can simplify an x minus nine with this x minus nine and an x plus 10 with this x plus 10. So on the, along the top, I have an x minus four left and in the denominator, I just have a negative one left. So it'd be x minus four divided by negative one or that'd be negative x plus four. If you divide both by negative one. Divisions can be very similar, except for that dividing, you have to multiply by the reciprocal. So you keep, change, flip. So you keep the first fraction the same, change it to multiplication, and then flip the second fraction. And then factor and simplify. So the only part that is factorable here is the 3x minus 18. I can take out a 3, and that's left with x minus 6 which means you can simplify an x minus six from each. And then on the top, I'm left with this one times three, so three over x plus nine. And that's as far as it simplifies. Similar to when we had the x, you cannot simplify the three and the nine because the x does not have a factor of three. So you'd have to be able to take out a factor of three in order for them all to simplify by three. All right, moving right along. <clears throat> After simplifying and multiplying and dividing, we added and subtracted. In order to add and subtract, we have to have a common denominator. You can, let's say that you have A over B plus C over D. You can always find a common denominator by multiplying the denominators together. So you can say a common denominator would be like BD, BD in this case, BD. It's not always the lowest common denominator, but it does work. So you could use 3x squared here if you did x times 3x in the first one and use 3x squared. You can just use 3x as well. Let me show you what happens if you just multiply the two denominators together. So if you wanted to just do 3x squared. So this side would need an x, and then this side would need a 3x. And then whatever you do to the denominator, make sure you do to the top as well. So I found the common denominator by taking 3x times x, and I'm going to say it's 3x squared. So on the top left side, 3x times 2x will be 6xy over 3x squared minus y times x will be xy over 3x squared. Then you can subtract. So 6xy minus xy, that's going to be 6xy minus 1xy, which will be 5xy over 3x squared. And then I need to simplify. So I have an x over an x squared, and that would simplify to 5y over 3x. So if you don't use the lowest common denominator, which would have been just 3x, you'll end up having to simplify your answer more in the end. Um, this problem already has a common denominator, 3x plus 12 and 3x plus 12, which means you can subtract the numerators. Um, but because you have a subtract an expression, 5x minus 2, we do have to subtract both. So this will be 7x plus 6 minus 5x minus 2, which means that 7x plus 6 minus 5x minus negative 2 will be plus 2. So when you are subtracting, and anytime you subtract an expression, so anytime you subtract something with more than one term, you need to distribute the negative. So if you subtract more than one term, distribute the negative. Okay. 
Okay, so then combine like terms, 7x minus 5x would be 2x, and 6 plus 2 would be plus 8. And then that would be over the 3x plus 12, which was my common denominator. I noticed I could take out a 2 on the top, and I'd be left with x plus 4. In the denominator, I can take out a 3, and then I'd be left with x plus 4 as well which means x plus 4 divided by x plus 4 simplifies, and my final answer here would be 2 thirds. So once I subtracted, I simplified down as well. <clears throat> okay, if we want to do a problem like this, we will have to factor this trinomial first. So I want something that multiplies to negative 10, adds up to 3, would be um, 5 and negative 2. So this will factor to x plus 5, and this is going to be x minus 2. Which means if I want these two fractions to have the same denominator, the second fraction has the x minus 2, I need an x plus 5. Whatever you do to the numerator or the denominator, you do to the numerator as well. And then you can add the numerators. So it'll be 3x plus 2 times x plus 5 over x plus 5 times x minus 2. Distribute the 2, so that will be 3x plus 2x plus 10. Combine like terms, that'll be 5x plus 10 over x plus 5 and x minus 2. You could take a 5 out of the top and it would be 5 times x plus 2 over x plus 5 and x minus 2. You could even rewrite the denominator as the trinomial multiplied out. Either one of these answers would be acceptable. Since it doesn't simplify anymore, you could leave it like this and you could replace the denominator with the multiplied out version. They're all equivalent forms, so I'll, I'll accept any of those answers. But if you can simplify in the end, make sure that you do. And the last thing we did for this year for Unit 6 was solve and then stating any restrictions. Um, so right here, I have an x squared in the denominator. So for restrictions, that means that my x squared cannot equal 0. And if you solve for this, it'd be 0. So that means that you just can't have x equals 0. If you plugged in 0 into this equation, you would get divided by 0 errors. The next thing you're going to do is find the lowest common denominator and then multiply everything by that. Between 4, 2, and 2, my lowest common multiple, or my lowest common denominator multiple would be 4. And then they all have an x squared. So 4x squared will be my lowest common denominator. So multiplying each fraction by 4x squared or 4x squared over 1, if you want to <clears throat> write it in fraction form, will clear out my fractions. Because 4x squared divided by 4x squared is 1. And so in the first fraction, I'm just left with an x plus 6 plus 4x squared divided by 2x squared will simplify to 2. So 3 times 2 is 6. And I have the equal sign. And again, 4x squared divided by 2x squared will be 2. And so I will have a x plus 4 times 2, or 2 times an x plus 4. So <clears throat> combining like terms, x plus 12, I'm going to distribute over here 2x plus 8. And then I have to solve. So I need to get the x's on one side. So I'm going to subtract x over here, and then I'm going to subtract the 8 to the other side. So 12 minus 8 is 4, 2x minus x is 1x, so that means x equals 4. And as long as x equals 0, I was good, so x equals 4 is my answer there. Okay. So looking for restrictions first, let's factor this trinomial here. So multiplies to negative 6 and adds up to 1 would be positive 3 and negative 2. 
So this does factor to x plus 3 and x minus 2, which is what my other two fractions have in common as well. So my restrictions first are x cannot equal 2 because that would make this denominator 0, and it can't equal negative 3 because that would make this denominator 0. So we can't have 2 or negative 3 for, in the domain for values of x. Your lowest common denominator will be that x plus 3 and that x minus 2. So multiplying each piece by that. So this side by x plus 3 times x minus 2, and this one, and this one. So here we can simplify the x minus 2 and the x minus 2, and you're left with 1 times x plus 3 plus, here x plus 3 simplifies and you're left with 1 times x minus 2, and then over here both x plus 3 and x minus 2 simplify and we're left with 5. So it's going to be distributing the 1, which really is an unnecessary step here, but x plus 3 and then plus x minus 2 equals 5. Combine like terms, you'd have 2x, 3 minus 2 is 1, Solve for x. Subtract 2x equals 4. Divide by 2, x equals 2. Oh, let's check our restrictions. x cannot equal 2, which means that this problem would be no solution. So that was called an extraneous solution. It looked like an answer, but when we plug it back in, it would give us an error. So therefore, it is not an answer, and we don't have any other choices, so no solution. Okay, restrictions here, I just have a single x in the denominator, and so that means that I cannot plug in x equals 0, because 5 times 0 would be 0. 5 doesn't have any restrictions over here because there's no, there's no x. This is a fraction equal to a fraction, so you can cross-multiply. So you take the product of the diagonal, so 2x times 5x would be 10x squared, and then you'd set it equal to the product of this diagonal, which would be 5 times the quantity x squared minus 5x. So just like when you subtract with more than one term, you have to distribute the subtraction. If you multiply something that has more than one term, you have to distribute when you multiply as well. So 10x squared equals 5x squared minus 25x. Then we have a quadratic equation, so get it equal to 0, so 5x squared minus 5x squared on both sides would be 5x squared equals negative 25x, then I'm going to add 25x over here, so 5x squared plus 25x equals 0. Then factor and solve. So I can take out a 5 and an x, and that would leave me with an x plus 5. That's as far as it factors. Solve by setting each factor equal to 0. And then mental math or inverse operations, I'm going to get x equals 0 or x equals negative 5. I think x equals 0 is part of my restrictions, and so even though it looks like an answer, this is an extraneous solution, and my only answer is x equals negative 5 for that one. Okay, I'm going to do one more. So the only restriction, again, is going to come from this single x right here. Um, that means I can't plug in x equals 0 because 6 divided by 0 would give me an error. The 5 and the 10 do not have x's, so you're good. Lowest common denominator would be 10x because 5 times 2 can make 10 and x times 10 would make 10x. So 10x would be my common denominator. So multiply everything by 10x. So then I would simplify the x's here and I'd get 10 times 6 is 60 minus... Um, here, 10 divided by 5 would reduce to 2 over 1. 
So then I'd have 2x times 7x, which would be 14x squared, equals. Then I would simplify 10 divided by 10 here, and I'd get x times x would be x squared. And then you can solve. So you can either, it's quadratic, so you can get it equal to 0, and then try to factor it or use the quadratic formula. But what I notice here is that there's no x term, which means that I can solve by using square roots. So I'm going to add 14x squared to both sides. I get 60 equals 15x squared, 1x squared plus 14. Then to solve by square roots, you get the x squared by itself. So divide by 15, and I'm going to get 60, 34. Yep, so 4 equals x squared. Take the square root. And then remember, anytime you square root and you're solving, you get two answers. So my answer would be plus or minus 2 equals x, or x equals plus or minus 2. So that means that x equals positive 2 or negative 2, which are neither one are in my restrictions. And so if you're watching, that one might be familiar. I think it's from your homework. Okay, hopefully that was good and you can start preparing for your test and you'll be ready to go whenever I see you next.